I have been looking for you guys everywhere. <sighs> Do you know what time it is? We are so late. It is circle time. Come on. Today we're going to be learning and having some fun while doing it. Well, kids, the first thing we have to do is our national anthem and bed. So remember, we're going to stand tall. We're going to stand straight with our hands to our side. We're not fidgeting. We ain't touching ourselves. We ain't touching who in the house with us. We are strong, standing strong, tall, hands to your side. <laughs> So the next thing we have is our Pledge of Allegiance. Remember, when we say the Pledge of Allegiance, your right hand is going to go across to your left chest. Now, it might look different on the screen. We get mommy, daddy, older brother or sister, older cousin, grammy, grandpappy, whoever's in the house to help you. But also, I pledge my allegiance to the flag and to the Commonwealth of the Bahamas for which it stands. One people united in love and service. Awesome job, boys and girls. Usually we don't clap after the pledge, but I have to praise you. So next, we're gonna have our prayer and scripture. So everybody hands together, heads bowed, eyes closed. 
and thanks to God, we raise our hands as, we, as he heals us, protects us, and preserves our great Bahamalan. We thank you for praying special, paying special attention to our health, our strength, and our education. We honor you for the gift of life each day in the precious name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. I hope your eyes were closed during the prayer, boys and girls. Good. Now, today's scripture reader is taken from Psalms chapter 107, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And remember, God loves you. No matter what anybody else says to you, God loves you. Our thought for today, you are braver than you believe and stronger than you seem and smaller than you think. Let nobody bring you down today or any other day. You are you. Let yourself shine through. True. Our island of the week is New Providence. New Providence is the capital. The capital of New Providence is found. On the island of New Providence is the capital, Nassau. And I'm going to share some facts with you here. First, the capital of New Providence is Nassau. I just said that. Also, Nassau was once called Charlestown, but was renamed in 1695. Supposedly, Nassau, when it was Charlestown, caught on fire by the Spanish, and then they renamed it to Nassau. So imagine if there was no fire, your capital was not going to be Nassau. It was going to be Charlestown. New Providence was originally just Providence. The new was added later to avoid confusion with old Providence, a, a Paris stronghold of British Honduras, which is today Belize. Can you imagine that? It was like they was confusing us, confusing us with Paris. I was like, I'm in shock. I'm in awe. They're not those type of people. A nest fun fact. Thank you, Nassau. Nassau. Nassau's gone funky. Nassau's gone slow. We've got a dug on beat now. We're going to call our very own. Nassau Rock and Nassau Road. Nassau's got a whole lot of soda. Right. Uh, feel all right. Mini skirts, maxi skirts, and Afro hair do. People. And I love and our last part. Okay, and our last part. You have it? Hurry up. Some scenes from the original Jaws movie was filmed on New Providence Island Beach, known as Jaws Beach. Ah! Okay, it's a friendly shark. You just say hi. Hi, shark. Okay, I think that's enough. Whew. That shark really got to me just now. <sighs> okay, moving on. Are you scared? Like I was scared. Famous landmarks. The first one, the House of Assembly. The House of Assembly is the lower chamber. It consists of members of parliament elected from individual constituencies for five-year terms. The House of Assembly performs all major lawmaking functions, like some of the laws they make now about having to stay inside, stay inside, be safe. Queen's Staircase. 
The Queen's Staircase, commonly referred to as the 66 Steps, was carved out of solid limestone rocks by slaves between 1973 and 1974. These steps were later renamed in honor of Queen Victoria. The pathway that leads to the steps have been paved, so there are now only 65 steps visible. So it used to be 66, but now it's 65. Hmm. Government House. Government House located on a 10-acre estate. Trust me, kids, that's a lot. Stands on Mount Fitzwilliam and an official resident of the Governor General of the Bahamas. Rawson Square. Rawson Square is located in downtown Nassau. Downtown Nassau, right? Mm -hmm. It was named for Sir Rawson W. Rawson. Kids, you should always get that right on the exam. Who's Rawson Square named after? Rawson Rawson. His first name and his last name is the same. Hmm. He was the governor of the Bahamas during the late 1860s. In the middle of the square is a bronze bust of Sir Marlow Butler, the first Bahamian governor general in an independent Bahamas. A fountain in the square was named for Sir Stanford Sands, the first Bahamian minister of tourism, or some of us know him as the father of tourism. Straw Market. Bay Street Straw Market is a favorite for locally crafted souvenirs and other Bahamian finds. The original straw market burned down in 2001. Ask your parents about the footage. Trust me, they will tell you it was hot and it was blazing. Fort Fincastle. This fort was constructed of cut limestone in 1793 and strategically placed atop Bennett's Hill to protect historic Nassau town and its harbors. And guess from where? Or from what? Pirates. Supposedly Nassau was a dangerous time. Nassau was a dangerous place. Next, we're moving on to our word of the day. Our word of the day is gullible. Yes, gullible. Let's talk about gullible. Definition, easily persuaded to believe something or someone, any type of story that they give you. If they tell you ghosts believe, ghosts are real, that person is gullible and they believe that ghosts really exist or that there's a monster underneath the bed. There's no monster underneath your bed. Gulliver Max believes that pigs could really fly. Wow, Max. You think pigs could fly, Max? No. Antonym. Now remember, antonym means that word is the opposite. So let's find out what's the opposite of antonym. Cynical, yes, cynical. It's the opposite of gullible. Synonym. Synonym is that that word is the same, has the same meaning or almost the same meaning. So what's the synonym for gullible? Naive, yes, naive. Oh, wait, hold on, what? That was a pig and it was flying. I guess Max isn't gullible? Uh -huh. Now it's time, kids, for sight words. Yes, it's sight word time. And I'm going to invite my friend, Jack Hoffman, to the party. Oh, look, listen. 
listen and say the sight words. W-H-I-C-H. Which? W-H-I-C-H. Which? W-H-I-C-H. Rich, rich, rich. W-H-A-T what? W-H-A-T what? W-H-A-T what? What? W-H-E-R-E, where? W-H-E-R-E, where? W-H-E-R-E. Okay, kids, I picked a few words from the video, and you're going to tell me what that word is. So, first word. Come on. You got this. What you say? 
What did you say? Well, <gasps> you are correct, yes. <gasps> what about that one? Tell me what that one is. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. About? You are correct, it's about. What about this one? That's one. Uh huh. Uh huh. What do you say? What do you say? <gasps> out. Yes, it's out. It's out. What about this one? Yeah, yeah. <gasps> so, what about this one? You get it? You get it? What is it? What is <gasps> Manny, yes. Oh, yes. Y'all got it. Boys and girls are so smart. Now it's time for the grammar review. Grammar review. Now, we have three parts of speech up to date. Nouns, adjectives, and action verbs. Now, I'm going to remind you of each one. Nouns, name a person, place, thing, animal, or even sometimes an idea. We have adjectives. Adjectives describe a noun. It tells me how a noun looks. How many of it? Hmm, how it acts? Hmm, okay. An action verb shows action. Any movements that I do, anything that I do, is an action verb. That's and run in action verbs. The rest fell. So we gotta try to come back. Okay, let's see. Teacher. Teacher, teacher, teacher. Teacher, is teacher a noun, an adjective, or action verb? Hmm. You say now? You sure? Okay. We can check later. What about red? Hmm. It's something that's red. 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 Da, da, da. Hmm. Adjective? You sure? Okay, we can check on that later. What about jump? Jump. I did it. It must be action. Okay. Action verb. Gas station. Hmm. That's where mommy and daddy goes to get gas for the car. Or else they'll be stuck on the side of the road. Hmm. I think that's a place, right? Okay. That means it's now. Because now it's our places. What about dirty? <sighs> dirty. If you think something is dirty, Maybe you're describing it. So it should be an adjective, yes. But we're gonna check all of this at the end. What about read? Read, reading a book. That's something to do. So it's possibly a action verb. What about talk? I'm talking now. I'm doing something. Talk, talking, hmm, hmm. Action verb, okay. Drink, like Miss Monker needs a drink of water right now. Drink, drink, go, go. Action? Okay. Baby, what about the baby? Baby is a person. Very good, so baby is a noun. Snake. Gotta make sure you know snake outside here with me. Uh. Snake is an animal, so it must be a noun. And our word for the day, gullible. Hmm, if I said somebody is gullible, I'm describing that person. So that means gullible 
is an adjective. Let's see. Teacher's a noun. Red is an adjective. Oh, he's so smart. Oh, 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 oh. Jump. Jump is an adjective. You all got this. You all got this. Gas station is on the. Mmm. Dirty. Oh. Adjective. That's what y'all told. Red. Y'all got it. Mm hmm. Y'all got it. You're so smart, smart boys and girls. <gasps> and this. And that's what y'all. Y'all told me that, right? Okay. Yeah. I you know. Drink. Mm hmm. Baby is a nut. You're so smart. Mm. Snake. It's there. It's a noun. Oh. Hot? Did I forget to mention hot? Okay, I did. Tell me, what do you think hot is? Something is hot. Am I describing how it feels? So, since I'm describing how it feels, it must be an adjective. And colorful, also an adjective. Okay, these don't look straight. I don't like how they look. Let me straighten it up. Let's straighten it up right now. Ah, that's straight. Whew. Ah, that was a lot of work. We all did a great job. Great job. Great job. Great, 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 great job. Now we're going to have a little listen and speaking comprehension today. I'm going to tell you a story about the chick Chani. And I, whew. listen, chick Chani's are creatures of legend. They can only be found on the island of Andres, our largest island in the Bahamas. Oh, the chick chani is a bird. I heard something in the trees. It can't be a chick chani because chick chani lives in Andres. I'm on New Providence right now. Oh, you okay? I'm hearing birds, I'm hearing teens rustling in the tree. Oh. Okay, we gotta be quick, because I'm not gonna be stuck out here in case the Chick Chani's on vacation. Okay, Chick Chani's are legendary creatures. They live on the island of Andres. They are bird-like, human-like creatures. They look like birds on the top, and they look like men at the bottom. They are six feet tall with three toes and three fingers and a tail that they use to hang upside down in the trees. <sighs> I don't think it was a good idea to do this outside anymore. I'm kind of scared. And no, I'm not gullible believing in the story. It's true. <sighs> okay. But I'm going to tell you a story about two boys who went to Andres and how one of them had to face the Chick Chani. Because let me tell you something about Chick Chani's. They like bright colors. They like respectful children, but they hate children who are rude and disobedient and have no manners. So if you're a rude, disobedient, disrespectful child, if you ever go to Andres or if you live in Andres, you have to be careful I'm one of you. Please change your ways. All of a sudden, it's getting louder and louder outside. But I'm going to quickly tell you the story about these two boys who went to Andres in the summer to visit their grandmother. The first boy name was Trevor. He was the oldest. Hi, Trevor. I get up. And the next boy name was George, and they were brothers. George, George, you supposed to say good morning or say hi to me when somebody's trying to talk to you. 
George has no manners at all. Well, Trevor and George went to Andrews in the summer to visit their grandmother. Their grandmother loves to tell them stories about the China. Of course, Trevor, being the obedient, respectful child, he sat quietly and listened to the story. So he knew all about the Chick Chani. But George? George was disrespectful and rude. And whenever his grandmother tried to talk to him, he used to run away into the forest. The wrongest place to run away to. The forest where the Chick Chani lives. So Trevor is well behaved and stayed home, safe in the arms of his grandmother. At all costs, George decided to go off. So George goes, dun, 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 dun. and then he hears something in the woods. Something go crack. Huh. George, he thought nothing of it. So he continued walking. Dun, 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 dun. Then he saw an old man on the side of the road, covered in a cloak or a cape, covering his whole face and body. It was a bright yellow cape. Now, George decided to walk past the man. He didn't say good morning, good afternoon, anything in the man. He didn't have any manners at all. Of course, the man spoke and said, Good morning. George pretend he didn't hear that man and continue walking. But then he heard a crack again in the box, so he quickly turned around. The old man was gone. Where did such an old man move? He would disappear so quickly. So George keep on walking, 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 walking. All of a sudden, he was picked up into the sky and he came face to face with the Chechani with his big red eyes staring at him and his beak getting closer and closer to his face, getting ready to peck him. George started screaming, please, please, let me go, let me go. Oh, let me go, let me go. And a nasally voice Honey said, no. George started to cry and cry. Please, please let me go. He didn't know what to say to Chick Chani. He didn't stay around and listen to the story. He didn't know if he said sorry and good morning, that Chick Chani would have let him go. He just plead and plead and please let me go, let me go. He didn't even say sorry. He, he didn't say please let me go. Just let me go, let me go. And he fought and fought with the Chick Chani. As the Chick Chani was getting ready to peck him on his forehead, peck, another noise was heard and the Chick Chani let him go. That's when his big brother, George, the one with all the manners, the respectful one, the obedient one, came and asked him, what are we doing on the ground? George told him the story about how he was picked up in the tree and how this creature almost pecked him in the forehead. Trevor just laughed and laughed. <laughs> Said, that was the Chani. If you had stayed and listened and be obedient, you would have heard that story from Grammy. From that day forward, George was always well behaved and obedient. When they tell him go take a bath, he took a bath. When they say go do his homework, he went and do his homework. When they tell him to go and school, he didn't hide underneath the house anymore. I really do hope that George and up being like you and never do that again. Now, that's the end of my little short story. So I'm gonna ask you some questions, see if you're paying attention. So, on which island can this legendary creature be found? Hmm? Hmm? 
if you say it. Andres, you are correct. Yes. And remember, Andres is our largest Baham Island. Number two. What are two adjectives that can be used to describe the Chichani? Hmm. Now, remember, the Chichani doesn't bother you if you're respectful. So what do we call a Chichani that doesn't bother you? Hmm. Let's think about that. And then, but he likes to play tricks, tricks on rude kids. Hmm. Now, if he doesn't bother you, if you're nice, you could say that the Chikchani is peaceful. But if he likes to play tricks on rude kids, he must be mischievous. Very good. Okay, in which season did the boys visit their grandmother? Hmm, let's think about that. Hmm, do you remember? If you say summer, you are correct. Which character was obedient and which character was disobedient? Remember, this is George and this is Trevor. So we could say that Trevor was the obedient one and George was the disobedient one. Very good. Should we always be respectful and obedient? And obedient? Yes, we must always be respectful and obedient to all the adults in our lives. Remember, teachers, your parents, your grandparents, your auntie and uncles, always. Don't be screaming at them and say, leave me alone. Okay? You promise, Miss Monker? Great job, guys. Now we're going to move on to our last mini lesson, which is on measuring weight. Identify the most reasonable units to measure the yeah, weight the video to of watch the first. choices below. But so we pounds, have an average pounds. adult, a slice of bread, a kitchen table, or a pack of gum. So I am... I'm just going to pause that video for a while. Now, usually when it comes to pounds, pounds are used to measure things that are kind of heavy, while as ounces measure small things that are very light. So, if you had to measure paper, you would use ounces. But if you had to use, measure something heavier, like an encyclopedia, you would put pounds, because trust me, that book is huge. And going back to the video. Identify the most reasonable units to measure the weight of the choices below. So we have an average adult, a slice of bread, a kitchen table, or a pack of gum. So I am an average adult, and I know that I weigh about 160 pounds. So I know that pounds are a pretty good measurement for about something the weight of an adult. So I'll put adults in that category right over there. Now we have a single slice of bread. So even a full loaf of bread doesn't weigh a lot. Maybe that gets close to a pound, but a slice of bread is going to be less than a pound. So I would do this in, I would do this in ounces. A kitchen table, well a kitchen table kind of weighs the same, it could, uh, if it's a very large kitchen table, could weigh the same or more than an adult. So I would do this in pounds. And then a pack of gum. So once again, a pack of gum is fairly light. If you ever been to the gym and held even a one pound or two pound weight, it weighs more than a pack of gum. So a pack of gum is going to be less than a pound. So ounces seem to make sense here.
very nice short video. Now remember, ounces are used to measure light items, so things that you know are light, while as pounds are used to measure heavy items. So we have a sweater. Now a sweater, what will we use? Hmm, I think we are gonna use, you tell me, ounces, very good, ounces. Next, we have ice cream. Mmm, yummy, yummy, in my tummy. Ice cream. How would we measure ice cream? Does it feel heavy? Does it feel light? Ounces. Very good. Oh, barbell. You ever see those strong guys just lifting them up in the gym? Hmm. Those are what? Pounds, very good. Chicken leg. Mm -mm. Love that chicken from Popeyes. Very small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ounces, very good. And an adult male. Now, if I was a superhero and I had to help save an awkward man and put him on my back and just lift him to safety. Safety, will I be lifting up pounds or ounces? Hmm? That's right. I will be lifting up pounds. Oh, you're so smart. <gasps> yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, kids. We are finished. We are complete. And I had so much fun with you guys today. Yeah, do a little jig. Do a little jig. Oh, remember to stay safe. Remember to stay home. Only go out if you have to go out. Oh, bye, guys. Miss you already. Oh, you're so smart. Bye, guys, and have an awesome day. Have an awesome week. Have an awesome month. Have an awesome year. Bye.